Right, we are back. Oh, no. That's better. <laughs> right, so in this video, we are talking about sticky UV resin. I've experienced it. You've probably experienced it, which is why you're here watching this video with us now. And it is so frustrating. So in this video, I'm going to run through what I've experienced with playing around with UV resin for quite a bit of time now, but I may miss some steps. But we're going to hit the most crucial reasons why your UV resin is sticky when you take it out of your mould. And sticky UV resin has really, really prevented people from, from using the stuff. And sometimes just reading what other people have said and, and it scared them to come across the UV resin world. Because to be quite frank, who wants sticky work when they take it out of their mould? None of us. So first of all, we'll just really quickly go through the difference between UV resin and two-part epoxy. So UV resin goes through a photochemical reaction, which creates the bond between the molecules inside. Now a two-part epoxy goes through an exothermic heat-generated curing bond, which is very, very different. So this is super fast. Epoxy takes a bit longer. When we pour our UV resin into our mould and then introduce a light ignore the bubbles this is just for the video what's happening is this is stripping away certain chemicals and exciting some of the other molecules and during that excitement they begin to bond together to create this 3d network a solid network but that reaction can be hindered in several different ways and we're going to talk about that so i purposely undercured my resin for this reason it's sticky because we haven't exposed it to the correct amount of light for the correct amount of time always follow your resin instructions i'm using let's resin as an example it shows curing time it will tell you what wattage lamp to use the recommended wattage lamp is 36 watts now when i first began playing with uv resin i was using this 0 0.5 watt light and it was okay for really really small pieces but not ideal for big pieces because what is happening is it's not exciting those molecules enough to create a solid bond and we're also suffering with something known as oxygen inhibition but we'll get to oxygen inhibition shortly so we'll run the same experiment again but i'll keep my light over my piece for longer Okay, so the instructions do say three to four minutes, but this is a really small piece. I ran that for two minutes and there's no sticky residue. I'm using a different finger on my glove just in case there's any more sticky left on this one. So I know that that is absolutely fine. It's good to go. So curing time plays a big part alongside the wattage of your lamp. Now, another reason could be incompatible, incompatible ingredients that you're mixing with your UV resin. And this is, again, again another really common issue. You can get specially formulated dyes and, and stuff like that for UV resin. I'm just going to add way too much liquid dye to my resin and mix that in. What this is going to do is form kind of barriers inside the resin which will prevent and hinder those molecules from from getting excited and being able to bond with the nearest molecule next to it and you can see it's also really lowered the viscosity we'll be lucky if this even cures again ignore the bubbles so when we now introduce our light and those molecules start to get excited we're slowing that excitement down dramatically especially on the surface and also the UV light is going to struggle to penetrate through that surface of the UV resin and it could end up with a gooey inside which is not nice so here after two minutes you can see there's still a lot of flex on that surface area so that has been three minutes and it still is very similar to a hard jello so I'm going to cure that from the underside now just flip my mold because I don't want to make a mess, I want to be able to take this piece out. So by doing this, flipping my mould, the UV light should now be exciting the molecules that couldn't be reached from the surface. 
So that's had a further two minutes on the underside. Let's see if we can take that out. It is still really flexible and under cured and super, super sticky and gooey. So that is another reason why your UV resin may not be curing. If I was to squeeze that, it's going to ooze out or pop. And it's really, really not good. And it can be harmful. Pop that back down. <laughs> so less is best and making sure anything you put in your UV resin is compatible and it's not preventing that light from curing through and creating those bonds. Another thing could be contaminants. If you've say played around with a silicon oil at some point and there's still residue inside your mold and you go to pour your UV resin in, that is also going to hinder the UV resin and prevent it from curing properly. Another issue could be the brand that you're using. Let's Resin is my go-to. <laughs> so although I have experienced issues with Let's Resin UV resin, they're more of a common issue which we're gonna talk about now but yeah some some brands are just even with the correct lighting and following the collect co collect <laughs> correct measures um, still come out sticky so the most common that is probably the issue that most of you are having is something called oxygen inhibition so the oxygen around you inhibits the surface of the UV resin, preventing those molecules from being able to bond together. So I'm gonna put this into an easy to understand analogy. Think of this as a bottle of penguins. It sounds really, really strange, I know. But all those little molecules, or scientifically known as free radicals, are now called penguins. And this mold is our ice cap that the penguins are all huddled on. The penguins that are deeper down in the resin are huddled together quite nicely. But the surface penguins are really exposed to the elements. So they've got their back turned to the rest of the group in essence. Now it's really important to work in a controlled environment, well ventilated when you're using epoxy or UV resin. But the issue is with that, is that the oxygen can actually create issues with our UV resin. Now I'm not saying don't work in a controlled environment. I'm, I'm going to show you how. So I've set up a desk fan just to the right of me here. I'm going to turn that on and aim that at my work. Now I'm going to introduce my light, which is the sun keeping those penguins warm. Now these penguins at the back are exposed to that cool air or snow from our fan. So as the penguins further down in the resin are starting to bond and, and keep warm, these ones at the back are being hit and hindered by snow and cool air, which is preventing those penguins from moving and bonding on that surface of the resin. And that is oxygen inhibition. So if I now tilt my mold, you can see that residue, which is the oxygen inhibition creating uncured surface resin, which is sticky to touch and an absolute pain to work with. Sorry, little penguins. So oxygen inhibition is not just affecting us resin artists. It affects 3D model makers. It affects nail technician. It affects dental industries or dentists, teeth doctors, whatever you want to call them. Any chemical used in any profession that goes through that same process of curing UV resin has this issue. But it's also not entirely a bad thing because that uncured surface allows us to layer and bond better with our resin. So even working in a well ventilated area, we're, we're going we're gonna to have that oxygen inhibition problem. Now nail techs often lay a clear plastic over their nails and cure which prevents the oxygen from being able to disturb or hinder that surface of the resin. But it's not great for us resin artists. I mean I could do that on this but it's just going to create possibly sharper edges around our pieces. But what I could try is just 
controlling the area around that part of the mold by doing that I'm gonna just pop a clear mixing cup over the top and just cure it so that way there's no kind of movement of oxygen around the piece and it's it's gonna cause less of an issue so after just one minute under my lamp you can see those penguins <laughs> are now nice and warm and huddled together and there you go no sticky resin I know what you're thinking though the fan wasn't on so we'll do the test again with the fan on but the cup over the mold fan on cup over the mold please don't blow off <laughs> and then our light and you can see again it's good to go so think of this as being like an ice wall preventing that cold air being blasted on the back of our little penguins so whilst it is important to work in that controlled air controlled environment where there is ventilation you can also just try to minimalize it min minimalize it <laughs> around your work area now say for instance you followed that tip and it just for some reason didn't work for you it could be your brand could be a number of different things all combined but what do you do if you if if the uv resin is still sticky when it comes to the end of maybe even four minutes under the uv light now some people find a another thin coat works for them some people put their pieces out in the sun the trouble is putting it out in the sun with a sticky surface you could end up with all sorts of contaminants ruining your work now out comes the shot glass of water this is the best tip i ever learned with uv resin and i have even seen people who make 3d big 3d models water curing their pieces after they've made them and this really can save your work so i'm going to make another hopefully sticky oxygen inhibited <laughs> it's really hard to say some of these scientific words i'm going to make another sticky piece i'm going to turn my fan back on introduce my light it also helps to have the light over the resin so there we go we have our snow covered penguins that haven't quite bonded on the back so if we now take out our piece pop it in the water and then give them that heat again i can turn my fan off now my hands are getting cold you could think of it that this is it started raining and washing that snow away and those frozen penguins can now move a bit better and just finish that bonding process and get warm with the rest of the groupie did i really just say groupie <laughs> so what this is doing is is actually preventing the oxygen removing the oxygen from the surface and it's allowing those molecules to bond together solid and the uv light is bouncing around inside that water now i recommend i mean this is a clear piece but i recommend flipping if you've got color in there or additives etc just turning it around although i said it bounces around it's still important you don't want to take that out and then mark it so i'd say a minute on each side and guys please be sure to share this video around because we kind of have a duty of care to the environment and it's horrible to think that under cure pieces i mean this is still sticky i can cure that in there as well um the under cure pieces are just being thrown in the trash going to landfills you know try not to throw away anything really put these into layers of epoxy say black layers and, and hide them so essentially you're you're going to be using less fresh epoxy by hiding these in try not to bin your bin your mistakes if you have to smash them up smash them up and hide them and make different kind of art from them we do we do have to be mindful so we can now take this out 
Now some other people clean the stickiness off with an alcohol, rubbing alcohol. I mean, I've tried it. It's, it's really hit and miss. It really is hit and miss because it can make the piece a lot worse by rubbing it with an alcohol solution can can really really mess the piece up you'll end up with stuff stuck to the surface and it's just not worth the risk pop it in a glass of water give it a cure and you are absolutely good to go with your uv resin it's the best trick i've ever learned and i think everybody needs to know about that and what cure inhibition is because who wants this on their finished results nobody right guys that brings us to the end of the video i hope that answered lots of questions follow your instructions and use this trick if you if you experience it give the video a thumbs up drop me a comment if you haven't subscribed it is free hit that subscribe button i apologize if i've mi missed anything out i'm still fairly new i like to think to the resin community i, I know i've been doing this for a, a couple of years now but I'm still learning as I go. Right, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.